Hello guys, in this video, I am going to discuss about bases and the dimensions of a vector space. So we will see that. So let's start with bases, okay. So again, consider, uh, suppose this is an example, okay. So V is R square, so my vector square, uh, vector space is R square. My vector is X comma Y, it looks like this, a two tuple. And these belongs to field, so my field is R, real number. Okay. Now consider a set B which is like this so i take a vector 1 comma 2 and another vector 2 comma 1 okay so this is b now if you see span of b span of b is equal to the whole vector space v so if you remember what is span span is all possible linear combinations of b so you do any possible uh, linear combination of b what will you get so if you put all of that into a set you get v your whole vector space r square okay let us just visually uh, see that okay so let me go to desmos right so here i have put the vector so 1 comma 2 is the first vector and 2 comma 1 is the other vector okay so these are my two vectors 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1 now if you see as uh, if you see the equation i'll again show you the equation yeah so oh, Sorry, these are multiplying factors <clears throat> right so here you can see that there is this a1 multiplied to the first vector plus a2 multiplied to the second vector so this is my linear combination that i have over here right so a1 and a2 come from the field and if you see if i move a1 and a2 you will see this blue arrow is my result that is c1 c2 so this is the result of the, the linear combination of these two vectors right so the blue arrow is a linear combination of red and green now if you see i can actually get any point on this grid so the blue arrow can be anywhere on the grid if i ha if i choose the appropriate a1 and a2 so by this i can basically change a values of a1 and a2 okay you can see that over here uh okay i can just put label okay so now my a1 and a2 is minus 6.1 and 2.85 and for that this is the resultant vector that is the linear combination c1 c2 so you can see i can move anywhere in the grid i mean so the blue arrow can go anywhere in the grid so you can see by all possible linear combinations this blue arrow is actually covering the entire r2 space right so the span of the two vectors the red and the green vector is actually the entire r2 space so when this is the case when the span of some vectors is equal to the entire vector space then we can say that b is the basis for v okay now please understand why basis so basis means in some sense they are the base so if you have these vectors you can get any vector in v just by linear combination so if you have any if you have these two vectors it's done you have all the vectors in the i mean you can represent any vector in the vector space if you have these two bases okay <clears throat> let's take another example say b1 is just one vector 1 comma 0 with the same vector space so you can see now b1 cannot represent the entire uh, v entire vector space because this will only be on the x-axis so you can only scale this so you can just move on the x-axis you cannot you can never go into the y-axis right so because of that b1 is not a basis because span of b1 is not equal to the entire vector space v hence b1 is not a basis for v so you need to have two bases if this is r2 uh, two vectors basically sorry two vectors in the basis set so b can be also known as the basis set right now uh, so b1 is not a basis for v in general uh, if you have any vector space v and your field is anything so if v is the vector space and b is a set of vectors and it is important so it should they should be linearly independent vectors okay v1 v2 and vn should all be linearly independent vectors 
so if you have such a case then and the span of b should be equal to v so there are two conditions there should be linearly independent vectors and the span of b should be equal to v only then you can say that b is a basis for v or it is a basis set for v okay now there is something known as the standard basis so actually this is something that you know i mean this is something that we have learned since our childhood so if you have vector space as r raised to n that is an n tuple over here then and you have some basis e1 e2 up till en then standard basis are basically this so on the ith position you put one so e1 is one zero and all zeros e2 is zero on the second position like that so if if i just give you an example so for r2 so if your vector space is say if your n is equal to 2 if you are in r2 then the first basis will be 1 comma 0 right and the second basis will be 0 comma 1 so these are known as the standard basis because they these are the easiest basis to work with right if you want to represent any vector say you want to represent 2 3 if you want to represent this vector it is very simple you get the answer uh, very easily you want 2 over here so multiply this by 2 and uh, you want 3 below so add it with the uh, you first multiply this with 3 and then add both of them you will get this right so these are known as the standard basis uh, so 1 should be on the ith position for n uh, different dimensions here right so these are what is known as the standard basis now talking about dimension uh, one more thing uh, there is no unique basis for a vector space there are infinite options as you see as you saw so now these are the standard basis that you have you can also have uh, these as the basis that i just showed you right these were also the basis so you can have any basis for a vector space there are infinite options and it depends on the application as to which basis uh, are appropriate, right? Okay. Right, so that was about standard basis. Now talking about dimension. So what is the dimension of a vector space? So it's quite simple. So dimension of a space is basically, uh, so the dimension of the space spanned by B1, say suppose you have uh, this B1 as like this, so only one vector again my vector space is r2 suppose and vector looks like this then you can see that this vector 1 comma 0 is only on the x axis so i can only span uh, numbers that are on the x axis i cannot go up right so you can see that this is one dimensional i cannot go to the other dimension it is only one dimension so this is one so how do we get that so in general the dimension of a vector space is nothing but the cardinality of basis set so the cardinality means the number of vectors in the basis set okay so uh, if b is the set for basis and uh, b has these different vectors so the number of vectors how many number of vectors are there in b that will tell you the dimension of the vector space so if there are two vectors it will be two dimension if there are n vectors it will be n dimension okay if there is only one vector like in this case only one vector so it is one dimension so the number of vectors in the basis set uh, tell you what is the dimension of the uh, vector space spanned by that uh, basis right okay so uh, the cardinality can be denoted like this so two uh, straight lines okay okay let us see some example so now let us consider a different example so now say v is a set of polynomials of degree less than 2 okay and a vector looks something like this over here so it is a polynomial of degree less than equal to 2 and these all belong to field which is r real numbers okay so now v is a set of all polynomials of degree less than 2 this all these belong to v and uh, this b1 can be one of the basis 
so if you see the basis over here you need some constant so for that there is one uh, for x there is this and there's x square okay now you can also have this as your basis so as i told you there is there are infinite uh, options for basis so i can have this as also as my basis as one one plus x x plus x square this can be other way if you see over here you can make out what is the dimension so you can see that the dimension of this vector space is three dimension right uh, you can also make it out from here so dimension also is the number of free variables that you have so over here you can change a you can change b and you can change c so the number of things that you can change is your dimension okay we'll talk about this more in the next video where i uh, where i'll tell you more examples on basis and dimension okay so the number of free variables are also equal to the dimension and the number of vectors in the basis are also dimension okay so these are the two bases that i can have for a polynomial less than uh, of degree less than two so let's take an example so suppose i take this polynomial okay so i want to represent this polynomial with these two bases okay so for the first it is quite simple so uh, if i just put it into this vector representation because it is easier so if you see uh, i have these bases so you want uh, okay there's a typo over here so <clears throat> let's make the basis for this so there's one so you have four over here so there'll be four right then this is one so multiply by x should be one and then x square so that is two right so if you just have these coefficients you multiply these coefficients with your basis and you get this vector that that's simple right again now if you want to represent the same the same equation with some other basis so if you want to represent with this basis that is also possible if you see if i multiply this with uh, this with 5 minus 1 and 2 so what will happen is 5 into 1 will give you 5 uh, plus uh, you will get uh, 1 plus x into minus 1 so that is you'll get a minus 1 over here <clears throat> and then you'll get a minus x plus you'll get 2x sorry for that long x plus or you'll get 2x square right now if you solve this so basically uh, so there's 2x minus x which will give you x and there is 5 minus 1 which will give you 4 so if you see you get the original uh, i mean this equation back so you can represent any equation over here using these bases as well okay if you want to know how did i get these coefficients it's quite simple so uh, you sh you should see first the bases how do they look so if you see there's an x square over here so and there is no x square anywhere right so i mean if you see x is there two places and one is also there on two places so uh, choose the the thing that has that is only one okay so i'll tell you why so there's two x square that you want so you'll have to multiply this thing by two so that you get two x square hence there is a two over here because you have to multiply it with two okay now when you multiply this by two you actually get two x also okay but you just want one x you just want 1x so for that you'll have to minus 1x from here so this now tells you minus 1x i mean you have to multiply this by minus 1 so that you get a minus x so that adds 2x right and then uh, now whatever is left so you also got a minus 1 over here because this got multiplied to minus 1 so now what you want is 4 so for multiply this by 5 you get 5 minus 1 4 right so you you can have infinite number of bases okay this depends on your application what where do you want to use this whole theory right so that is all for this video in the next video we'll discuss more examples on bases and dimension and i'll see you there i hope you uh, learned something from this video thank you so much for watching thank you